today we're gonna try to make some some low fire um well, it's not please i'm making this is the um amazing slip three recipe bb's amazing slip so this is supposed to go on greenware it goes on on top of glaze for interesting effect you can do you can go to high fire so it's actually a wide range you go from like cone zero six to probably six because it got frit epk and silica so i'm gonna try to mix it and see if this will work so i got all my so this slip is pretty amazing so basically you uh, you have to just get the basic ingredients which create the base and the base is just 34 frit 3134 33 epk and 33 silica and then you can now add some other stuff to create different color. So I'm gonna basically use a lot of um, mason stain. You can see it. I got a variety of mason stain here that I can add to it to make different color. Um, it calls for some oxide also, which I will try using. But let's see. So today I'm gonna try to do the pink and the purple since those are specifically using mason stain. And then I could try the green. I think to do mason stain is probably pretty simple since it's calling for just 10% mason stain of whatever you're trying. So if you're using other colorant, I guess it use a bit less. So like if you have copper carbonate, you just use only 3%. Um, if you want to do chrome green, you only use 2.5% of chrome oxide. But I'm using mason stain, so that's going to be that 10%. Alright, let's try making some of this. So what I'm going to do is a thousand gram badge, and I uh, can't see too well here, okay. So I have a scale here, um, so you can see my junk, yep, right there. So I'm going to put a uh, thousand grams into this mason jar here of dry, and then thousand, uh, I'm going to add to like start 800 grams of water first, and then we'll just mix it up to the consistency we want. Okay, we'll start with the... I tear this to zero. I'm gonna add 800 grams of water. Oops. Oh. 890. That's fine. We quite not quite one to one yet, so that's my water. Then we're gonna do. Okay, first I call for let's see, 34 frits. So since this is a thousand gram, then this is a 100. So we just go another 10. So that would be 340, 330, and 330. So I'm going to do 340. Uh, let's see if I find 340. Okay, so I will uh, pause here and I'll just add, just dump basically um, into the jar actually. I'll tear this down to zero. So I'm gonna do 330 of 3134 ferro fritz and then 30, 330 of EPK and 330 of silica. So I'm just gonna add them and then dump it into my water jar here because we want the, um, the solid to kind of like settle down to the liquid and that way it mix better in that case. And then some some, re um, some recipe that calls for bentonite. Bentonite is supposed to soak it like 24 hours before you actually even use it. It doesn't actually mix in that well into the liquid. Not soluble, I guess that's the word. Um, so I guess I will do all the mixing and then we'll come back. Okay, that was silica, and that was 330. So earlier in the video, when I was using the water, 
<laughs> I didn't do the right math because if you're doing a thousand grams dry, then you need thousand gram water to go with it. So I should have measured it up to about 800, 900 grams, but I was doing 80 gram. And then I'm looking at the bottle, it's like, huh? And then I was scooping out the dry, and I just realized that <laughs> it fills up like almost a uh, half of this jar. I'm like, wait a minute. Something's not right. And I realized that, oh yeah, I'm doing a thousand gram batch. So it won't fit in this jar. This is probably for the, you know, uh, 250 gram batch or something will fit. So it could like about 500 water, 500, uh, sorry, yeah, total 500 grams in mass. But since I'm doing a thousand, this is like a 2000 gram batch. And in that case, I think it will feel like this, you know, ice cream bucket here. I think this is about three and a half gallon. Not quite. It doesn't fill it all the way to the top, so it's roughly about a gallon, gallon and a half ish. So, all right. So the next step is to mix this up, and I guess I could just let it settle for a while if I really want this to work well. But uh, I don't think that's a problem because most of my stuff is Fritz, uh, EPK, and silica, so I should be able to just mix this up with my handy dandy mixer here and actually um, before I use this mixer it's probably better to use the 8 whisk the stuff gets stuck in between this paint mixer here and doesn't work real well and then after that you have to do the using the 80 mesh sieving like this uh, this is too small this one so we get like this bigger one so 80 mesh sieve is what you want to use and one thing I learned early on is what you need to do is you have to do at least twice. And make sure you push all your material through. Otherwise, it won't mix. You basically don't want to lose any clay in here. Um, if it's a lump, you're trying to like push it through and then you keep working it until everything goes through. And you might get like rocks or something like that, to, but leave it in there. But you should try to get all your clay material to go inside. Uh, let's see what's going to grab the whisk okay so i'm gonna whisk this thing it's kind of like not too well mixed yet so i'm just gonna whisk it for a while to get it kind of creamy looking and so i'll pause here and then i'll keep whisking until i get like creamy looking and then i'm just gonna start doing the pushing through the sieve and now just add water to kind of lubricate it. And that's why you start out with less water to begin with, because you have already at one to one ratio, you it's probably gonna get too watery when you're trying to add more water to it while you're trying to like uh, run it through to save. Okay, so I'll pause here. Okay, here's the exciting part. Oh uh, got the bowl underneath. Did my AD mesh stiff. And this thing was uh, pretty mixed. One thing I just realized just now is, is now that I'm making a base glaze, I just realized that to add the stain to it, um, I have to somehow recalculate this, even though it's 10%, but I don't want to use this all up and make this one color. So I guess what I want to do is probably rethink this. So if this is a thousand gram dry batch, and normally it's called for um, a 10%, so that would be 100 gram of whatever color. But what I'm thinking is, since I don't want to use them all up in one batch, what I'm gonna do is maybe I'll split this into 10 batches and then do a 10 gram of each of the color. So I, that way I have 10 different tests. This is the first time I'm making this, so I have no idea this will work or not. So Let's see, I got 10 jars. Oh, by the way, when you're doing the dry stuff, make sure you got this um, handy filter here. And you probably want to get, you can get any kind as long as it meets the uh, um, the filtration standard. I forgot what the particle filter is, but, um, oh yeah. So here, this one says uh, Vapor P100. And it's zero, zero, zero. So basically you want the filter to catch the smallest particle possible because those uh, dry ingredients are fairly small particle and you don't want to be breathing it in. 
when you are um, working with glaze. Once it's liquid, it's not so bad, but you know, I still wear gloves and stuff because I just don't like the feeling of the clay in my hand and stuff. Like some powder, they just stick the hand into glaze, and I just like see like how icky it is, like even with gloves on. So I just prefer to have gloves on in general. Just you know, get things working. Okay, I just brush this through. Since I'm doing a small batch, this is not so bad. Um, some people recommend just like, you know, if you have a five gallon bucket batch or something, it takes a long time to do all this by hand. It's painful. So what you do is you just sit this on your, oops, yeah, it's really hard to do this one hand. Okay. Um, but yeah, you sit this on the pottery wheel, your bucket, and just hold like a brush there and then it, while it's spinning, it's just kind of like pushing it through the sieve like you're supposed to. Right, I'm gonna pause here since it's so hard to do with one hand. And what I'm gonna do is like once I'm done with this liquid underneath, I just scrape the bottom off so everything goes in there. You can see there's some left in the bucket here. So I'm just gonna like add a little water so I can get the rest of this. Don't add too much because I don't have that much. Uh, I have, technically have like 200 gram of water left to you know add before I get too much of it. Okay, so I'm gonna pause. Okay, so as you can see, I sieve that through there. And the liquid looks pretty nice and smooth, but you can see there's still a lot of lumps and stuff left on here. So I'm gonna run this through again second time, and then hopefully I get more into it. I actually got a new bucket now, and this one I actually put some water in and I kind of scrape as much of the stuff from it as much as possible. Um, I guess I don't think this is that important when making like this base glaze because we only have three ingredients and big and like huge ratio like you know one three parts and then each takes a one part so if you lose a little bit of each it's probably not a big deal um but when you start working with glaze that has like you know minu minuscule amount of colorant for example like i was doing a tin chrome red and in that one tin is only like you know five percent of the whole thing and chrome is like 0.75 percent so in that case you don't want to lose anything at all because then it just changes your glaze drastically. Might not at all work, in fact, if you don't have all those color in, in there. So in this case, I'm just gonna do it one more time, get as much as I can, call it a day. And after that, I'll just um, add the color in. And those are pretty pure color in, so I don't think I have to like filter it through. But maybe it helps anyway to like sift each batch in a smaller one. Because uh, I think the point of this not just to get rid of the lumps and bigger items inside, it's also to mix stuff really well into your glaze. Um, if you don't do that, you can not quite get a consistency of a good glaze. Okay, I'm gonna pause here and I'm gonna do this second time and then I'm gonna divide them into uh, 10 batches and I'm gonna add color and then repeat the process. Now that I separate them into 10 different batches, uh, I already put some color in. So to add the color, I just weigh out about 10 grams of the mason stain and then add it to, so each of the, jar, each of the jars here has about 190 grams of, you know, combined liquid weight. So I know like total when I start out, I have basically 1000 grams worth of dry stuff and then I add, you know, 800 grams of water. And then I added 900 grams, so I'm sitting about 1900 grams of total weight here. And I didn't want to add too much water because I can always balance out the specific gravity a little bit later when you do specific gravity calculation. So I'm just gonna get 190 and add the 10% of 100, which is 10 grams, into that thing. And that, and I just shake it really well. So add. trying to I'm gonna wash this out after I'm done so I just have like several of this boat here it's more accurate to use on this kind of scale and, you know like some other things seem to like add some weight and imbalance so I don't like to use anything if you want it precise so these are you know like the chemistry you know, good old days when I was in college doing chemistry this is what we use for measuring out chemical it's pretty good um, okay so now that's in there let's put a lid on it just get a lid, close it up real well, and then shake, 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 shake. Let's see, how to do it with one hand here. Yeah, I don't want it to leak while I'm shaking it. Oh, 
let's get it. Okay. And then just shake it. This one is a vanade. Yellow tin. Vanadium in here, so... Shake it up. Mason stain is pretty cool. It actually maintains the color. Pretty well. So... I still have to do a specific gravity measurement on this thing. But for now, you know. So I got yellow now. I got white. I have dark coral, which is red. Grass green. Black. And I think it's orchid. Okay, so I've been labeling them. I should probably label that too. And I'm just gonna make uh, four more and then I'll call it a night. Now I have a low fire slip, technically, not glaze, that you can paint on the clay. And then I should test um, on a test tile here on Bisquare and do low fire and see what it looks like after I use it. Hopefully it comes out good, I have no idea. Alright, that's it for now.